Oh, good evening and welcome everyone. Hope you've had a great weekend. Uh, this is the weekend wrap and I'm here with Macca at the moment. How you going, Macca? Feeling very lonely, mate. It's just you and I. Just you and I. <laughs> no Nicky this week. Uh, hopefully Donkey uh, will be on board a little bit later. Uh, but in the meantime, we'll crack on, mate, because it uh, has been an interesting round of footy so far and obviously um, a great win by the Adelaide Crows on Friday night against all the odds uh, to discuss in length. Uh, well, so, when you, oh, when, go on. I'm just going to say, when you look at, uh, just expanding on what you said, um, when you look at the side that we picked and the, the players that we had out, I think it's probably one of our greatest wins for about the last three years. Uh, I would not dispute that at all, mate. Uh, it was just a gutsy win. No one picked us. I certainly didn't pick us. Pick us. Um, you know, we were lamenting selection, uh, all sorts of things. Uh, you know, so to to come out, it was such a gutsy win, and uh, you know, against. Uh, all expectations. So, you know, let's zip through the results uh, so far and then we'll crack into that one. Okay. And we had today St Kilda uh, and, uh, sorry, yesterday, St Kilda and GWS uh, fighting out a, a draw. 73 each. Uh, talk about unexpected results. <laughs> Who would have thought St Kilda w- would have even gotten close? Yeah, I didn't even get to see that game. Um, but, uh, you know, I would never, not in a mad fit. Uh, not, 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 not on form, but it just goes to show what happens when. Uh, you get 22 bodies go out there with great determination. Yeah, uh, uh, GWS in a bit of trouble, I reckon. They're only, I mean, you know, they're 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 going okay in terms of uh, win loss, three one and one, but uh, haven't been quite as convincing. And and a team like I mean, St Kilda looked like a rabble when we played them. So for for them to uh, to get up and obviously they even had a chance to win. They actually should have won the game. Um, well, Gina- GWS are probably the most talented side in terms of just, if you look at the talent in their team, they're probably the most talented team in the competition. But there is that certain air about them that they don't have the gritty determination of some of the other teams. That's my opinion, anyhow. I, I agree. They're still yet to prove themselves under adverse circumstances. Um you know that they yeah. they sputtered through the final series last year when when really uh, as you say they're by far and away the most talented lineup uh, on paper, um, but they still you know they struggle away uh, they struggle in big games, um, they've still got a bit to prove I think and uh, yeah uh, good on St Kilda though uh, all they did is really it was again uh, similar to us it was all about work rate for St Kilda they just worked hard they cracked in and. Uh, you know, as I said, Carlisle takes that mark at the end and uh, they sneak away with it. So uh, good on them. Uh, mm. West Coast, uh, not terribly convincing over Carlton, uh, 79 to 69 on Saturday. Uh, West Coast are on top of the ladder, but uh, they don't really excite me at this stage. Well, I did watch this game and uh, it's not one for the, you know, for the classics, but <laughs> um, but because it was relatively close, it was entertaining anyhow. So. Uh, that's the best I can give them. It's entertaining. Yeah, entertaining. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Frio having a pretty solid win at home over Western Bulldogs on uh, Saturday evening, uh, one hundred eight to fifty four. Uh, Nat Fife, another big game from him. Another three Brownlow votes. Macca, um, Frio not going too bad so far this year. Well, I've been waving their flag a little bit uh, so far this year because um, I've had. Not necessarily by plan, but I have actually seen every game they've played. And uh, in the majority of them, the, this, they've got a team that's going in very hard, very, very hard for the ball. And with five back to bit, you know, five is back very best. Um, and then that, the other players lifting around him. Um, any team that plays for you cannot take them for granted. No. I'm not suggesting that they're going to be uh, winning the premiership, but I'll tell you what, they're going to be far, far better than most people thought they were going to be. 
Yeah, I don't think they're going to be the easy beats that they turned out to be last year. Um, they look a little bit more organised. Uh, Ross, I think, has got the game plan back under control. Um, and as PJ Crows points out in the chat, Nat Fife running back on top of the ground, and uh, it's amazing what a difference uh, a fit Nat Fife makes uh, to that Fremantle side. And it's you know you like to see the good players going around, and, and it's great to see Nat Fife in amongst it again and having an influence. Uh, and uh, yeah, Frio I think will benefit from that. Uh, he, plays, he plays very arrogantly, but Fife he does. Yeah, but that's all right if you can if you've got the chops to back it up, isn't it? Oh no, he, he can afford to. But you know, he's a of, of the really good players. Um, he always plays with with disdain for some of the others at times. Yeah, yeah, and I don't think it's a conscious thing. I think it's just. I think he he's very aware of his own skills, and and he mm. um, he backs himself in, and uh, you know, uh, I, I guess that's how it looks uh, to the naked eye that he is uh, treating everyone with a bit of disdain and a little bit of arrogance, but. Good on him, I guess. Um, well, most most good players have that arrogance. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, Darren Jarman comes to mind. <laughs> yep. no, I'll never forget Darren Jarman as a young lad playing uh, for North against Glenelg. I think it was in one of the grand finals. And uh, uh, Fudd taking a mark in front of Snout McFarlane on the wing and basically pushing the ball into Snout's face and then I running off. And, and then running off. I- yeah, yeah, well, I must. Mean, he, he was he, he was a player from another stratosphere, though, wasn't he? Really? Oh, yeah. yeah, fantastic. Anyway, pushing along. Uh, Saturday night, uh, Geelong uh, doing a number on Port Adelaide, and another situation where a team wins under less than perfect circumstances. Geelong eighty four to Port fifty. Um, you know, for all the early season hype, Macca, and this isn't a this isn't just a Adelaide versus Port Adelaide gripe, but Ports still don't excite me. I, I don't think, you know, they've loaded up with all, all the cast-offs from other teams and whatnot, but I, I, I still don't think they're going to contend at the pointy end this year. Well, I maintained all along they won't win the, you know, and I maintained all along that they're overrated as well. And uh, well, I, and, and they proved, the one thing I don't know about Port, what is their game plan? I, I genuinely cannot work out what their game plan is. I know what Watching Freo, I can work out there. There is Ports just seems to be a very, very haphazard plan. And on top of that, uh, as you said, uh, I, I saw the Kane Corns and he did, presenting it in a fashion to make it probably as worse as possible. By only mentioning number of kicks, but uh, he went through all the prime recruits that played on uh, Saturday night, and they got five kicks each. Yeah, the, the, three, the, the three of them. Yeah, and. Uh, yeah. It was a very, very poor contribution. I thought Jack Watts back to his terrible, casual worst. Oh, he made some blues, didn't he? God. Oh, shocking. And he's got uh, no spatial awareness, Jack Watts. He's, well, he's, actually, that's, that is his one big drawback. Yeah. No. Very similar but, to uh, Justin Kaczynski, the way he used to play. No no situational awareness whatsoever. Uh, Jack Watts got caught a couple of times and... Oh, I don't know. He's good when the ball's in front of him. Like, he's a decent player when the ball's in front of him. But in traffic and, uh, you know, under under heated circumstances, he, he generally coughs it up. I, I'm not impressed at all. And I think it was about the second quarter, um, I saw Motlop and I thought, shit, I didn't know he was playing. Mm. And, he, you know, his uh, impact on the game was very, very poor. And, of course, then we had the ex-North Melbourne guy who's... Uh, Real one highlight for the night uh, was uh, getting reported. Well, you know, the so, funny thing about Lindsay Thomas was uh, I'm sure that Port supporters, just like everyone else that wasn't a kangaroo supporter over the years, you know, would would have been screaming for, you know, the duck and all the rest of it. And now that he's on their team, <laughs> they're screaming for the head-high tackle every time. <laughs> yeah, they were, they were oh, my God. They welcome to him. But you, you're right, though. I mean... If they, I mean, if they don't have some success, and I can't see it personally that they, that they will, um, I think they're going to regret re- uh, loading up people they have. I don't know whether they really had any um, any choice maker. Uh, their their salary cap situation was such that 
I don't think they had much choice, uh, and I think they're just rolling through this squad, and they'll eventually turn it over, and uh, it won't be until they re- refresh with. Uh, I mean, some of the young players look all right. Um, do Howard, etc. He looks all right, but they've I just like, I, the one I like is a young bloke up forward, Murray. Yeah, Murray's good. Bonner's good. I mean, they've just got to get rid of their top end talent, and unfortunately, a lot of that that. Uh, Senior talent is on fairly long contracts, so until they can turn that over, they're, they're just going to be middle of the road. Anyway, uh, we had North Melbourne today, uh, surprisingly, 28-point winners over Hawthorne. Uh, Eddie had 98-70. to 70. Uh, They really got out of the blocks hard north, and uh, Hawks couldn't peg them back. Well, they, they, had, they had a plan to shut down Hawthorne's midfield, and they did that very, very effectively. And in the process, killed my dream team. Yeah, well done. Yeah, well, that's true. Right. Well, well done, North. Um, and uh, Jared, wait. They had, they had, a, they had a, yeah. Well, what donkey's been screaming, <laughs> Jared? Wait, a thirty-four-year-old recruit. Yeah. Um, but uh, I, you know, a thorough, thoroughly deserved win, and uh, under difficult circumstances too, because they had two guys got KO'd in the third quarter, um, and. Uh, well, I was waiting for Hawthorne to make a comeback and they made an attempt at a comeback. North Melbourne were far too good and thoroughly deserved their win and uh, they're a team that I thought would struggle to win a game this year, but uh, they're far better than I thought they were. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, early season and all that, but they're sitting three and two, third on the table with 135 percentage points. So you can't... It comes back ask... to the same old thing about effort, though, doesn't it? It does, it does. Um it's a, uh, it, it really is a, a, a keystone of the early season this year that the teams that that turn up prepared to play and prepared to crack in um, and execute the game plan are the teams that are winning. It it seems to be very much about on the day at at this early stage of the season anyway. Yep. And uh, a pretty entertaining, uh, not that I saw it, but a pretty entertaining um, um, game. Up in Brisbane, Gold Coast seventy six to uh, Brisbane seventy one. Well, <laughs> you just say to tell you, I actually went to sleep during oh, this did game. <laughs> did you? <laughs> yeah, it was. And it, look, it was a uh, close enough game, but um, yeah. By this stage, oh, I think I was footballed yeah, out. Had, had a gut full <laughs> by that stage. <laughs> and I did. You know, I dropped off to sleep for half hour. Yeah, yeah. Well, look. So I mean, it leaves. Um, the ta- I mean, we've got a few games left to go. We've got, obviously, Melbourne and Richmond on Tuesday night uh, at the G, and then we've got Collingwood and Essendon for a pretty... Uh, I don't think I'm going to be watching either of those games, to be perfectly honest with you, Macca. Um, but, uh, yeah, so two games left to finish the round. Yep. Um, and, uh, oh, well, I probably will watch them because, you know, I'm a bit of a footy tragic. But, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I could well go to sleep in them too. But as, I mean, all that aside, interesting ladder. Uh, West Coast still on top, uh, four and one. That was their first loss for the season. But as I said, they haven't been terribly convincing. Uh, GWS uh, back in second, and then North uh, third with Richmond still yet to play. Uh, Geelong, Hawthorne, Adelaide, and Port all on three and two, and in the eight. And then Sydney and Fremantle and Gold Coast also on three and two, but sitting outside of the eight. Collingwood obviously yet to play. Essendon and Melbourne yet to play. Uh, and then we've got Saints, the Bulldogs, who look already cactus this season. Um, Brisbane and Carlton, who uh, those two. Uh, Brisbane look the better of those two. Carlton look horrific at the moment. I don't know where they're, uh, they're going to come back, Carlton. They're going to be very lucky to win a game. I think I, so. I can't. Yeah, I, I'll stick my neck out and say they certainly won't win more. Well, I have already said it before. Well, they won't win more more than four. That's my opinion. And yeah. be lucky to get them. I don't disagree with you. I don't disagree with you. I think they've still got a long way to go. Anyway, uh, the game that we really all want to talk about is the Crows and Swans game. So let's get into that. Well... Get ugly. Damn, the 
was ugly. Well, it wasn't ugly this week. <laughs> <laughs> it was ugly for Sydney and just about every tipster on the planet, uh, but it wasn't ugly for the Adelaide Crows. Uh, fantastic, just a fantastic win by Adelaide over Sydney up there at the SCG on Friday night. Probably in the top yep. five best home and away wins of all time for Adelaide, wouldn't you say, Maka? Yeah, yeah, I would say that. You know, it's one of the games where uh, we were totally undermanned, and if you looked at it on paper versus the guns that Sydney had on the on the on the ground, you'd have to say Sydney will definitely win this and well, you would not give us a chance and no. uh, none of the critics did and I don't think any of any any uh people who, who think they know anything about football couldn't have possibly picked Adelaide believing that they would win. Not with the side that we had. But you know, they um that old saying one soldier down, one soldier one soldier down, another one up. Yeah. Um, well, it doesn't normally work, but it did because the people that we had there truly represented their club, truly gave a hundred percent, and I and it's very very hard to pick a player that didn't give a hundred percent for the whole game. Do that, it's very hard to get beaten. Yeah, no, and that's very true. Um, you know, Sydney's midfield haven't been uh, lighting it up this season, but uh, they, on paper, uh, you know, you're talking about Kennedy and Hanbury and. Um, Parker and Jack uh, as their four mainstays plus a couple of fairly handy second stringers going through there you know uh, up against our our little uh, our, our SANFL midfield just about <laughs> and yeah. uh, they just they were all over them and we'll get to individuals uh, in a moment so the scores were for people that were living under a rock Adelaide uh, holding on 12 goals 13.85 uh, to Sydney, 10 goals, 15, 75, a margin of 10 points. Um, and, uh, yeah, as I said, just one of the better wins that we've ever had, I think. Uh, and I, I was really interested in the comments, uh, in the commentary, that uh, we have, of all the teams in the AFL, including Sydney, we have the best winning perce- percentage at the SCG. Isn't that weird? Yeah, well, that's all. I, I still remember going back in that 97, 98 era when we uh, played in Sydney, and I think it was uh, 98 was the year that we won everything away to, to win the grand final, including uh, a preliminary or... Yeah, the, yeah. Final at Sydney. And, uh, you know, since that point, we've, we've always had a very, very good record of that crowd. I, I don't understand why, but um, the only reason I can think of it is it's a smallish ground, and mm. I think that if you really do put in effort, you do get rewarded. Mm. Uh, in the sense that you know you can bottle the opposition up, and you can, you can and if you're really going in harder than they are, you'll eventually prevail. So, and that's what actually happened. Well, I think that's a really good call, Macca. I think it is a ground that it, that does reward effort, um, and the effort that was lacking uh, last week so horrendously against Collingwood certainly made a reappearance. And Adelaide always look good when we're we're fanatical around the contest uh, and we have some attack on the player carrying the ball. Um, you know, generally speaking, you can tell very quickly whether Adelaide is switched on and we look switched on from the beginning. We got out of the blocks very well. Um, and, you know, you always wondered as, as uh, the, whether the class of Sydney would uh, get them back into the game and it certainly did. Uh, you know they certainly were coming uh, towards the end, um, but I but I felt like we showed some composure at the end, and we, not only that, I, I felt like we were really organised in that last quarter when you know we were starting to run out of legs a little bit. Uh, the the some of the positioning of uh, Mitch McGovern, who'd had a howler, let's be honest, um, but, but his positioning in that last quarter, uh, Tex going back uh, towards the end there, and a. If you're, we played very smart and, you know, it's exactly the kind of thing that we were talking about last week, Macca, about how, being able to adapt during games. Um, and, you know, we definitely came out with a game plan. We came out with a plan to, to choke them up um, and to, to play real, a real compressed style of game. Um, but at various stages of the game, uh, when as the game evolved, we were able to change shape a little bit, and certainly in that last quarter, when we needed to, you know, basically hang on, um, we didn't give them really an opportunity to to, um, to run over the top of us. I, I felt it was fantastic from Pike 
um, and really well in- executed by the players. It, it was a real big, yeah, a real big tick coaching staff who we, I think we have just criticised at various times this year. Um, and uh, but not, it would be very, very hard to criticise them in this game because, as you said, the, the game plan that we chose to play was the, definitely the right one. We all criticised Andy Otten playing, and I thought that Andy Otten was very well suited to the type of game that we did play, actually. Um, and 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 I thought played a pretty reasonable game, and uh, in, in and when you look at the midfield of Cam Ellis Yeoman, Hugh Greenwood, and your real mate uh, Douglas, yeah, those that those three in the centre square, you nearly faint with fright, yeah, and yeah. Uh, and yet they they actually smash the other the midfield of the midfield of uh, Sydney, which has got this uh, quite well-earned record of being one of the best in the competition, if not the best. So yeah. you've got to take your hats off, lad. Uh, absolutely. All right, let's go through some heads-to-heads and see if we can pinpoint uh, any real disparities. Uh, disposals were even slightly in Sydney's favour, 375 to 371. Both teams uh, kicked far more than handballed. Uh, I like it when we do that. We were 230 kicks to 141 handballs. Uh, I like that ratio. Um, marks were dead even, 91 each Tackles were pretty much even, 64 to 60 uh, uh, The hit outs, I, I thought Source really stood up uh, After last week's disaster against Grundy um, You know, Sydney didn't have a, a, a great ruckman They had, uh, what was his name, Young Sinclair uh, In the ruck But, um, you know, Source still had to do the job And I felt like he bounced back to 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 reasonable level of I think he's still got some ways to go but uh, I think he did well um, can't get off the, he can't get off the ground but apart from that um, I do think he had a very good impact on the game though yeah I think the area that source is going to struggle is with those mobile types with your nat new or your, or your grundies or those sorts uh, Sinclair okay. wasn't really like that and I think that's why sometimes he's had a bit of a touch up with Geelong um, yep. so anyway um, look, we were quite official inside, uh, official, efficient, official? efficient inside 50, uh, less than, uh, two inside 50s per goal, or per scoring shot, I should say. Um, so that was good. Our conversion rate was, uh, not too bad. Uh, and our disposals per scoring shot was 14.8. So it was up a bit, but it was that kind of a night. Uh, contested posies were even, 149 to 144 our way. Uncontested possession, Sydney actually won that 224 to 218. Effective disposals were around about the same, 280 to 274, so the, the uh, efficiency was similar, around about that 74 to 75% mark. Uh, contested marks were even. Um, marks inside 50, uh, Sydney actually towed us up there where only took uh, five marks inside 50 for the evening. Uh, the stat that really stands out, though, is clearances, and whilst it's thirty-four forty our way, um, at times it was the gap was far greater um, with clearances, and I felt that was one key area where we got on top of them early, and I, I felt like it was there was only a period in the third quarter um, that uh, they started to get moving with um, Kennedy getting a couple and and Parker getting his hand on it a bit. Um, where they evened up that number. But generally speaking, I felt like uh, we did them in, in clearances and around stoppage for most of the night. Is that the way you saw it? Yeah. Uh, you know, if you look at them just going by the scoreboard, we actually outscored them for three of the four quarters. Yeah. And the, the quarter that you mentioned, the third quarter, was the quarter I thought that they... Uh, that, that was their big chance to get on top of us in this game. And... I thought they blew it in because the, they yeah. did dominate us in that quarter. Yeah, and um, our our defence they worked overtime, and I thought they outstanding. They, but they'd push it out and come fr- flying back yeah. in again, and we were under massive pressure that quarter. And uh, I don't, I'm sure that everyone who watched it felt I think we're starting to crumble a bit mm. here. Mm. But when but at the end of the quarter, that uh, that only outscored us by seven points when you looked at it, and with the amount of pressure that they'd put on us. Um, well, I thought, well, they've had their chance and they've blown it. I just wonder if we can sort of have now come back. Because every, every team has a quarter 
where they yeah. pay a lot better than the rest of the game. That was Sydney's quarter. Yeah. Well, and, and even uh, in the last, they kicked 2-6 uh, to 3-1. So they had eight scoring shots in the last quarter, Macca. Um, well, that's... You know, well, Heaney, Heaney missed a couple. I, I do agree, though. I, I thought the third quarter was their wasted opportunity. Yeah, that was their big chance to get us, I thought. And, uh, look, this was, was some very heroic effort, my lads. Yep, absolutely. Look, let's go through some individuals and then we can sort of uh, pinpoint um, certain uh, key stats. Uh, in terms of disposals, Laddie was, again, number one with 30 touches, 15 and 15. Um, he had five inside 50s, uh, five rebound 50s, 10 contested possessions, went above 80% disposal efficiency, um, uh, four score involvements and eight intercepts. Another pretty solid performance by the little gnome. Tough little bugger. He, he, had, he actually got roughed up a little bit at times. I'm very, very conscious of him, but I, uh, he's in scintillating form. And to get 30 possessions in a game like that, yeah, well, really, he only had 29. Really? Well, the 30th possession was a lace-out pass to Buddy for a goal, so I don't know whether we can actually count that as a disposal. Oh, <laughs> oh that was a stick. Oh, he yes. couldn't have picked him out any better if he tried. Um, yeah. My best player, and we can, we'll can we go through uh, this in a little bit more detail later on, but my, my personal best player was Paul Seedsman. Uh, 18 kicks, 8 handballs for 26 touches. Um, but it was when and where he got those touches for mine, um, Macca, and what he did with the ball. Game. Outstanding game. I just really felt, was. yeah, I felt like he had a real impact uh, on on the game and made some uh, key uh, decisions and some key disposals that that uh, had a real impact. Look, he took three he, marks. Sorry, go on. I was going to say he dominated in the first quarter and he created momentum. Yeah, and, uh, uh, and classy momentum. Too. I, I just thought that in the last quarter, he, I think he was only down about one possession. That, but he, he, he had run, uh, he ran the most kilometres uh, of anybody in the game. He yeah. ran about sixteen kilometres. If I go sixteen metres, I'm rude. <laughs> and you know, he ran sixteen kilometres and uh, at the same time trying to be accountable for a man. It's an outstanding effort. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, he really did stand out in my opinion. Yeah, five inside 50s, two clearances, four rebound 50s. He had 12 contested possessions, so he was inside as well as out. Um, you know, six score involvements, uh, six intercepts, and uh, 638 metres gained, which was by far and away uh, above anyone else on the ground in terms of metres gained. And that's a key stat on a small ground. So excellent work from Seed. Uh, just moving down the list a little bit, uh, Tom Dida. Tom Dida. Mike, if he's not a lock, if he's not a lock for the Rising Star already, Macca, there's something wrong with that award. Well, on, on his performance there, he should be a lock for all Australia because I'll tell you what, that, that was an outstanding effort in the back pocket. Outstanding. And uh, um, we, I think we're in a very fortunate position. We end up getting two first round draft leave and we replaced him with a guy with a better who, player with well, who's much more versatile and and, and in the long run I, I believe he's going to be a far better player and look, and i've got to say hats off to nicky nicky kept singing his praise in the sanfl last year and saying that he'll be good when he comes up here and well done nicky um oh you know i give you a lot of shit but i've got to give you a bit of praise <laughs> to um so uh no tom, tom Do- Do- day's effort was outstanding and he was the pick of the Defenders, really. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, 18 and 7 for 25 disposals off halfback, 11 marks, um, you know, uh, 5 rebound, 50 easy. Went at 76% disposal efficiency, 6 1 percenters, um, and 9 intercept possessions um, for 317 metres gained. Um, but some key moments for Tom. I, I only felt like he was outdone once for the whole night and that was when the ball was basically uh no who was it it was bloody heaney that basically threw himself at a marking contest yeah. there in the last quarter and it wouldn't have mattered who was who was there heaney that was just a brilliant mark by heaney but uh, tommy did a he's he's walked into this team uh, as if he's never not been inside uh, he's made us all forget about jake lever very very quickly um, and it's great to see that someone who was has been on our list now. This is his third season with Adelaide. 
Yep. Uh, great to see him persist and uh, get some rewards. So um, he'll figure strongly, I think, in the rising star this year. Um, look, uh, the other guy I felt, uh, although his numbers weren't huge, I, I felt like Huey Greenwood was just a bit of a monster again Excellent. inside the contest. Um and, you know, his numbers do stack up inside the contest. He had 16 touches, 9 and 7, 2 marks. Uh, but 11 tackles, Macker, if you don't mind. Uh, 3 inside 50s. Uh, what's that? Uh, let me just have a look. 6 clearances. Um, 13 contested possessions. His disposal efficiency was down, which is probably the only knock uh, on well, him for the night. But it was that kind of game. Okay. No, no criticism there because when you look at where he got his kicks, how he got his, mm. they were they were under maximum pressure. I mean, he he was just he was throwing his whole body in and crashing and end up into the packs and and then coming out the other side of the ball and then had to get rid of it. He got about nine players hanging off of him. Yeah, and I, and I just thought he he, he and uh, Campbell and Jolman, you got to take your hats off to because they did put their bodies on. Yeah, um, uh, yeah. I, I felt like Huey was a little bit cleaner than Cam, but Cam also had a really big night uh, despite being a little bit fun. It, it seemed to me that after half time the game got very greasy, um, and it got a little Huey. bit harder to um, got a bit harder to uh, handle the ball, and and Sydney looked to be handling the conditions after half time a little bit better. Um, well, their ground, their conditions, and mm. they know it well. Yep. So Ellis Yeoman had 20 disposals, 8 and 12, uh, 3 marks, 8 tackles. So, you know, between Hugh and uh, Cam, we had 19 tackles. Uh, well, he had a good game, really good game. And uh, But I did notice in the last quarter, uh, when he had to chase somebody, he could barely move. I mean, yeah. was, and and, <laughs> and you know, with very good reason, because he had put his body on the line right through the game, and uh, he was he was knackered last quarter. Well, let's no. not let's not forget he's not long off a knee reconstruction himself. You know, we do forget yeah. this. Um, you yeah, know, you don't you, you don't come back full fitness. You know, after twelve months out with a knee reconstruction. So yeah, and and the lads played less than twenty five games. So yeah. I think sometimes because he's been on our list for a long time, I think Ellis Yoma gets marked a bit harshly. Um, but I, I think that my only knock on Cam is that he can be a little bit one-paced, but he gives us that big presence inside the contest and, you know, fumbles aside, he, he's, um, his ability to make room for himself inside the contest is pretty good um, and he's worth persevering with. And like, at the very least, he's a good foil uh, for our first stringers while they recover. Absolutely. Um, look, I thought uh, another bloke that has been copying an absolute belting from us, uh, and rightly so, uh, was Rory Atkins. But I thought that Rory Atkins actually returned to doing what he's in the side to do, um, which is something that Tex highlighted in his post-match, that we had 22 blokes that all played their roles. And I felt like Rory went back to playing his role. He had 17 kicks, 7 handballs for 24 touches, two marks, he kicked three goals uh, and was a bit of a catalyst early on. Um, only laid the one tackle, uh, three inside 50s, a couple of clearances, four rebound 50s, um, you know, only to the nine contested, but went at 75% disposal efficiency. But crucially, crucially, he had eight score inf- involvements, he gained 508 metres, um, and he was, he was key in us getting, you know, being on the outside of all that contest um, and getting the ball moving. And I felt like it's the best game we've seen from Rory for a while. Oh, easily. Easily the best game for a long time. And uh, he never piked the ball. I can't, I can't think of one instance mm-hmm. where he piked. I can, t- I can think and- of a couple where I felt, geez, Rory, you could have gone a bit harder there. But, again, I guess we've got to, we've got to think about who the player is, you know. We can't ask yeah. Rory Atkins to be Matt Crouch. So, Well, my criticism of Rory is being in the past when there's only him who can go for the ball and he hasn't. Yeah. And, and, and there weren't any situations like... And uh, he also turned it on with, with his class and his ability as well. And he actually played a big factor in his winning the game, I think. And um, I'm one of his harshest critics, but I've got nothing to praise for him. 
It was one of his best, as you say, one of his best. Yeah, and uh, look, you know, the, the, I think there's a lot of doubt still around Rory Atkins in terms of his ability to influence contests consistently. Um, uh, but certainly, I mean, we can only talk about the, the game just gone. And uh, certainly against Sydney, he placed himself well uh, outside the contest. Um, and he didn't dance around and fiddle around too much. He was more decisive than he has been with his disposal. And I think that was key to him being a bit more effective than he has been over the last month or so. Well, he was high in our best players. I thought he, he played a very good game. Yep. Um, look, uh, the other bloke in the midfield that's been under the hammer from us is Richie, uh, Richie Douglas. And uh, it looked like for most of the night he had a bit of a job and uh, he did it pretty well and also was effective himself. 17 touches, oh. 8 and 9, uh, 7 tackles, 4 clearances, uh, 8 contested possessions, went at 70%. But it was the work that he did in nullifying uh, Kennedy um, yeah, he, that was key, I think. Well, he had 17, Kennedy had 13. And, yeah. Uh, you know, to keep Kennedy, who is, is probably one of the class, classic and strongest uh, midfielders in the competition, uh, to keep him down to 13 touches in a, game, in a game that really suited Kennedy's style of play. Uh, well, I, I might take my hat off to Richard Douglas because, you know, he's, we kick him up the bum and he is a lot of people's whipping boy and I've given him a lash down again as well. Um, and I've got to say that... that I, I saw him in the last quarter there. There was a bounty throw in with about two minutes to go, and he'd, he'd done an excellent job in competing to get the ball out of bounds. And when they threw it in, I was hoping to God it wouldn't go in his direction because you see he could barely breathe. He was cooked. He, <laughs> yeah, he could barely breathe. And, and, he, and look, he's given everything he had to give, and you can't ask for anything more from him. Yeah. yeah. Look, it, it's look. true. And, and, you know, I think... Richard Douglas seems to be better now at this stage of his career when he does have a bit of a task. Um, and it makes you wonder whether uh, Pikey's better off uh, giving Dougie a task, whether it's a run with or a hard tag. Um, You're dead right. 100% right. You know, that because he's still, I mean, let's face it, he's still only got 17 touches, so not huge numbers from uh, a midfielder. Um, but so he was think, doing a job. Doing yeah. a job on Kennedy at the same time. Yeah, so, I mean... Don't don't forget that last week, still side bottom did a job on Sloney and got forty touches while he was doing it, Mac. So I mean, yeah, yeah but he's not so he's not still he's, side bottom. And I guess that's my point. That's my point. That if we use Douglas in the roles that he is uh, equipped for, um, and uh, you know, as we've said, and as others have said, twenty two role players. If Dougie rocks up and plays his role, um, then you know he's a, he's a valuable member. It's when he drops off that. Uh, that we start to struggle. Look, the only, I think the only bloke in the mids that was down a little bit uh, was Gibbsy, and, and to me, Gibbsy looked a little bit crook. He didn't look like he had anything in the tank. He still had 22 touches, 14 and 8, uh, 8 clearances, um, uh, 9 contested possessions. Only went at 50% disposal. Um, uh, was I was disappointed with him, but, uh, quite frankly. Um, I thought he was the one, the one mid who played below his capacity and... Um, and it may well be for the reason that you said. I don't know. but uh, it, it just didn't look... I saw him not chase a few times, and it's unlike yep. Gibbsy not to chase. Saw that. Yeah, saw that. And it, and it made me think at the time, I thought, oh, I don't reckon you're well. I, and given given uh, the state of our list at the moment and, and the <laughs> you know the decimation of our midfield, um, it wouldn't surprise me if he played a bit crook. Um, but he certainly didn't look as dynamic as he has uh, up until now. He's been our best midfielder over the, over the course of the last four or five weeks. So, you know... Now, can... I, I, yeah, ironically, he has been our best midfielder. And if you, took, if you rated him out of uh, uh, Greenwood, um, Cam Ellis, Yeoman, Douglas and him for their effect on the game, I'd have to rate him fourth. Well, so, it, um, yeah, he was. And, I don't reckon you know, he was and, right, Macca. No, he wasn't one hundred percent spot on, and uh, I think we'll cut him a bit of slack because yep. uh, agreed. He has every other game he's been agreed. Um, now, there's a few key people that I think we need to cover, and the first one is the captain, um, Tex Walker, twelve and four for sixteen, 
took seven marks, kicked four goals, one, a uh, couple of tackles. Of God knows someone must have bumped into him. Uh, four inside 50s. Um, <clears throat> pardon me. Uh, eight contested possessions. Um, seven score involvements. I, I felt like... Um, I felt like he had intent. He just wanted to influence the the game this week, and uh, it was much better from Tex. I, I wasn't as hyped about his game as as uh, the commentary. Um, I felt like he still spent periods of the game out of the contest, um, but I felt like overall and when it mattered, he really stood up. Um, I think for set our forward to have Dean disposal four goals. Um, and then, as you say, uh, a couple of tackles. Um, I, but I love the steely intent in his eyes. Mm. He, he he actually came out to play. There's no doubt about that. And um, the week before, uh, I do think too much was made out of one incident where he, very poor he ran past the ball where he player right in the ball. Yeah. And that was that being shown time after time. And But, you know, and blokes like Cane Corns and Rabbits, him who grabbed hold of that and then try and get, create a story out of it. But um, I thought Taylor, one of the reasons why people in the competition, players, have actually voted him as the best captain in the competition before because he actually did lead the team uh, to that tree. And I thought it was an excellent game, both in terms of the, his actual play and his effect on the game, but also his effect. Now, Macca, we're just going to do some running repairs here because you know that little slider that I got you to change earlier? Yep. I want you to go back and uh, just um, go down to where it was and just move it uh, towards the green a little bit because you're cutting out a little bit um, at the beginning and the end of your words, so it's just a little bit too tight. And in the meantime, I'll crap on about someone else. What are you crap on? And I'll do that. <laughs> um, because I think intent is the key word, Macker. And the other bloke that came out with real intent, uh, um, despite not having... I, I wouldn't say he had a huge impact on the game, but I, I felt like his intent had an impact on the game, and that's Josh Jenkins. Um, only the 11 disposals, 7 and 4, took three marks, kicked three goals, obviously. Um what else did he do? Seven contested possessions, went at 72%, six one percenters, eight score involvements, uh, which was the key for him. But the thing with Josh this week is that he, even though at times he looked ungainly in the way he was doing it, he hit every contest hard and he made his presence felt at every contest he was involved with. Would you agree with that? Well, I first thing I'm going to ask you, which way did you want me to slide it? <laughs> Uh, I don't care now because you're sounding better. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> all right, back to where we were. What yeah. was the question again? Uh, JJ, I felt like his intent at the contest was was key early. Um, even now, though look, we, we pay this guy 550k a year, it was more like the effort you would expect from a full forward who's getting paid 50k, and. Um, he, he actually showed some physicality and he actually showed some genuine intent to try and win a hard ball. And, uh, look, uh, I thought he win when he went on the ball in the ruck. I just thought he, he's, he wasn't too bad there as well. And overall, I, I was relatively happy with his game. And given the physicality of the game, the way it was closed, tight, crowded, I mean, you would, the, at times the game was being played in a quarter of the, of the oval. And uh, uh, you know, very difficult forward to dominate. But I just, I was, I was happy with his game. Yeah, I, it's what you want to see from Jenkins. You just want, like, as I said, at, at times he looks ungainly with the way he contests. You know, his arms and legs going everywhere, and he does not look com- comfortable uh, in those tight contested situations aerially. Anyway, but you just want him to make it. You just want him to make a presence. And I felt like. In doing so, he brought some other players into the game, and that's what you want from your big men. If they're not taking marks themselves, you're wanting them to uh, bring our smaller forwards into the game um, by making contests and, and not allowing cheap possessions uh, from the opponent's uh, defensive uh, setup. So I thought his game was really good, Jenkins. Um, 
the yep. other bloke that I felt was really good, and please, for the love of God, can we just keep him playing off halfback, is Wayne Miller. Uh, 16 kicks, one handball for 17, f- took five marks. Uh, a couple of tackles, a couple of inside 50s, a couple of rebound 50s, went at 70%, um, and uh, six intercepts. I just feel like, and we mentioned this last week, Macca, I just feel like there's a little bit of Andrew McLeod about him running off halfback. I was going to say, he looked a classy little individual running off the back line. Um, and again, uh, Nicky's uh, been telling us he's been training with the back lines or, uh, in the pre-season, etc. So, uh, like Nicky with her mail is too check for you, Nicky. I'm not going to ever give you any more, though. <laughs> um, but she, she was on, uh, on the money again. Uh, I thought Miller, is, Miller had played a really good game. But more than that, when he's got the ball, he's so balanced and he used the ball beautifully. Um, so your point's very valid. It it was like a young uh, Andrew McLeod coming off a half-back flank. And, uh, I would definitely be playing him there permanently. I don't think there's any other spot for him, Macca, that where he can be so effective. I think he's, I think he gives us something there. He gives us some balance. And what what I've noticed from Wayne that we haven't seen in the past is his ability to stay over the ball. Um, previously he's been a bit light and uh, tended to get knocked off the ball a little bit or knocked off the line a little bit but he's uh, I think we've mentioned it already a couple of times previously this season that he seems to have increased his core strength and uh, he's able to stay over the ball and stay on line um, a lot further and I really liked his game and he gives us some points he's got to tidy up his disposal a little bit um, and I would like to see him uh, as he does so, become more adventurous with his disposal um, and be a little bit more decisive. Um, I think he likes giving the, the first dinky 20-metre kick. Um, but uh, That's just a confidence thing. But I just, I like his, I like his, I just like the way he looks when he's running at the ball. Well, well he's got great balance and he, and he uses that balance to, to create time and space. And uh, uh, he did that several times because of the body movement. Uh, he had that, that ability to wrong foot his opponent, etc. Um, yeah, in the, when he's in the forward lines, he, he's, uh, he seems to be under pressure all the time. Mm. Uh, whereas coming off the back line like that, um, yeah, I, I was very impressed by the way he did it. And uh, yeah. that's a sample of what we'll get by playing him there. Well, then he should be there permanently. Yeah, well, I think playing with his back to goals, Maka, he's still not quite strong enough, and so he tends to get caught. Um, yep. But playing, you know, running to the goals, uh, I think it allows him to utilise his strength, which is obviously his his, um, his pace. So uh, and, agil- and, and agility, and agility. You're right. Now, um, so a couple of young lads uh, debuted, or didn't one of them debuted, and one it was his second game, and uh, I, I felt they both contributed really well. Uh, Miles Paholke, uh had ten touches, five and five, uh, took four marks. I felt like he looked really good. Uh, in the air, four tackles, uh, four inside fifties. Um, he had seven contested possessions, went at seven seventy uh, percent disposal efficiency. He had a couple of score involvements. Just for, he he showed something, Mac. I, I liked him. Well, that was a very tough game to make your debut in, and uh, personally, I was impressed too. Uh, he's not frightened of the the, the physical not side. Not at all. Uh, and in fact, I thought he reveled in it. And yeah. Uh, yeah. Some of his kicks were very, very hard earned. Yeah, yep. I thought he, he he could say that he stood up and he was counted. Yep, absolutely. And, and, he, and he's offside and, uh, with the more like a porn star with his moustache, Jordan Gillich. Um, shocking, shocking uh, eyebrows and 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 moustache. <laughs> let's, yeah, is, let's be honest. Horizontal hair, yeah. Um, and <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'd get that. Um. But having said that, um, he was relatively quiet for the first three quarters, but in the crunch time, I thought, in the last quarter was crunch time, I thought he really stood up and his pace on, uh, stood up. Uh, it had shown up a couple of times in the first three quarters. In the last quarter, I thought it showed up um, that blistering pace. He kicked a goal himself, and I think he was in the, involved in another one. And uh, these boys have got a future. Well, you know... Uh I gave Gallucci a bit of, not a pasting, but just a, a bit of a, um, 
I was a bit disrespectful, I think, uh, because as PJ Crows again points out in the chat, he hasn't shown anything in SANFL level. You know, he hasn't. He, we recruited him as a first round pick. He's a, he's a, a midfield forward. Uh, he hasn't te- been tearing it up at SANFL level. He hasn't really shown any weapons apart from his leg speed. Um, and I kind of thought well, he's just a bit. In fact, the bloke that he reminds me of is Richard Douglas. Um, <laughs> But And, you know, he started a bit shakily, I thought. But his last quarter was all class, Macca. And to lace out um, JJ um, with that with that little um, left footer uh, towards the end there, um, that, that was all class. That was a tight kick. Um, and, he, and for a first gamer in a tight situation in the last quarter of a very, very fatiguing game, um, that was all class. Um, yeah, and so, on, well, that's got something said, on his non-preferred foot too. That's right, that's right. It, there was little, very little margin for error there. I felt like um, his pace was uh, was a standout at times. Again, in the last quarter, he was able to burst free um, at times, and he certainly didn't mind backing himself in with regards to his pace. So, yeah, a, a surprisingly good game. Um, from Gallucci. I didn't like the fact that we picked him as a small forward, but I felt like he repaid the, the selector's faith and underlined once again, mate, that in the end, I know jack shit. <laughs> we all do. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> we just make out. Yeah, uh, that's but, right. <laughs> but no, the, it, I, it was one of those games that it's very, very hard to pick a... We, I think Gibbsy was a bit down, but apart from him... Gee, the other guys here, they really still... Uh, and, and these young boys coming into the game, well, say, a hockey first game. I'm not sure how many Gallucci's played before. But he, That's the second thought, match. It's only, his, it's only his second. Well, yeah, he debuted last year against Brisbane, uh, and then he was straight back out for the, uh, for the you know, for best 22, David McKay. Um, well, so it's virtually, virtually almost as good as a debut. So, oh, yeah, yeah. So these two boys, yeah, in that game, which you know, you, you couldn't get more heat in the kitchen than that, and uh, and I think they've made a, a reasonable contribution. Uh, guys lacking that experience, and, and they've both done uh, key contributions at critical time. Yeah. Now, Maka, just uh, the boys on the chat are whinging about you again, uh, and not because of so well, surprisingly not about what you're saying. So can you go back into those uh, settings again and just move that slider to your left uh, about a centimetre? Thanks. Less uh, green? Um, yeah, less green. So it's to your left. You carry on. I'll do that. All right. Very good. Um, look, uh, you know, it was one of those all-played world situations. Uh, a couple of mentions, I thought, Tommy Lynch was all right. He had 15 and 10, took nine marks and, uh, you know, six inside 50, so he certainly did his job. Um, I felt like uh, Jake Kelly was serviceable without being outstanding. Uh, Mitch McGovern had a shocker early. Um, Looks out of touch. He he took 11 marks in the end and had 20 disposals, Um, but a couple of howlers, uh, one that could have proven really costly just before before half-time and... Um, but when he got moved down back in the last quarter, um, I felt like he, he positioned himself really well and showed a lot of poise. Um, we all slammed the selection of Andy Otten, um, but whether there was some... I mean, I think there'd been some scuttlebutt about Hardigan's uh, hamstring before the game. So, uh, you know, I don't know whether Otten was picked for insurance or whether it just turned out to be lucky. Um, but I thought Andy played well and justified his selection. Um, well, yep. Yeah, well, um, and tell me, uh, with the guys with the feedback, how it's going? No, um, no good. Okay. Um, you know, I've got to say that uh, there was, in fact, five double A said that uh, Hardigan was out and not was in. Yeah, yeah. And in hindsight, it would have been very wise if that had been the case because. Hardigan went very, very early in the piece with his hamstring. And, um, uh, well, he, he must have been very, very dodgy, you know, for yeah. for the for so much scuttlebutt to be going around like that. So yeah. I, I, I'm amazed they played him. 
Well, and it brings up another point, Maka. Why the hell do we play Kyle if he wasn't fit? I mean, we've gone from a strained hamstring that he could have uh, maybe had a week off to now a tear that's likely going to be three. You yep. know, wh- why are we playing? We've we've played Sloney injured over the over the season. We've played Tex injured over the season. Um, you know, leaving aside the issue of how many hamstrings we've had so far this season, why did we? Why did we play Kyle, Kyle in the first place? Well, you know, one of the most uh, bullshit expressions used in football is, you know, when once you take your place on the football field, you you are fit. Well, mm. no, you're not. You've been selected, but yeah. as, as as if you're fit, but it mm. doesn't make you fit. No. no. And it, uh, yeah, uh, just to come back on McGovern. I, I've got to say, that's two weeks in a row where he's been absolute shit up forward, mm. and yet he's been when he's been moved down back. Um, he's looked like a good player and uh, makes you wonder is his career going to end up up forward or is it going to end up down back? Oh, look, I think it will end up at forward. Um, but uh, just at the moment, his timing seems to be all over the shop. So I don't well, know. I mean, he, dropped, he dropped one mark when it was in, when it was in his hands. Mm, yeah, uh, I think it's a confidence thing. Look, last but not least i just want to make mention to luke brown because he never gets a mention um and yet he did a couple of pivotal things uh during the course of that match he turned the tide a couple of times won a couple of key one-on-one contests he had 16 possessions 11 and 5 took six marks uh two tackles uh five rebound 50s um he also had uh went at 100 percent disposal efficiency he had five one percenters um, and uh, six intercept possessions. Luke Brown, uh, as much as Rory Laird, I believe Luke Brown, uh, he doesn't get the accolades that Laird does, but I think he's so key to our defensive setup. Um, and I, I felt like he was excellent because Sydney did play very small up for, not very small, but they they didn't have any real tall timber. So they played a lot of mid sized players. And uh, Luke uh, was pivotal in keeping them quiet. During the course Absolutely. of the game, Actually, and uh, it's ironic you mention him because um, if you made a, make a point of watching him during a game and make a point of watching every, uh, concentrating on every one-on-one contest that he has, and you count the number of times he gets beaten, it's so rare. And I mm. I said to Mrs. Macker during the game when I'd seen him uh, in, in twice in succession beat his opponent, I said, "If there's one player I'd hate to stand out there as a football, it would be him." Because he just doesn't want you to get a kick. No, that's right. That's right. Look, so that's uh, that's the wind-up of the individuals. Uh, let's have a look at our best, uh, worst and breakout award, shall we? Go ahead. You're going to get one. Now, Macca, this week I didn't put it out to Twitter. Uh, you know, uh, too busy uh, preparing for my own uh, amazing one and a half quarters of football that I lasted today. <laughs> so I haven't had a chance to poll our listeners. Um, but our Jet of the Week award, I think, personally, is between Seedsman, uh, Dude, and um, probably an honourable mention to Huey Greenwood. Well, my mine was Seedsman. Yeah. I think we're in agreement. I mine was Seedsman as well. I just felt for four quarters for impact on the game, um, and uh, you know, uh, just really coming into his own, and, and it shows you what a difference a, a good preseason and, and a, a you know a fit body uh, has on someone. Uh, and Seed is reaping the rewards at the moment. The blokes with more possessions, the blokes uh, that played key roles. I thought, you know, uh, everyone had some key moments, but I felt overall Paul Seedsman uh, got our Jet of the Week award. Few 
few candidates for the breakout award. Obviously, we look at blokes who started the season with less than 25 games, and we had a few of those. Uh, we had D-Day, we had Ellis Yeoman, we had um, Hugh Greenwood and uh, Gallucci and Paholke. Um well, well, you know, you can probably make a case for all of them, but mine, mine only because of the fact he just took his game to a completely new level was Tom Dode. And uh, um, a backman couldn't play, could not play much better than that. And this is a, a guy playing his fifth game. So for me, it had to be Dodo. Yeah, I, I think there's a case for Huey Greenwood. Uh, he was in the area that we were most under the pump. Um, and I think our game relied, or, or our chances of winning relied on our midfield at least breaking even. And I think both Cam Ellis Yeoman and Hugh Greenwood were key c- components in making sure that we were able to win enough ball. Uh, and don't, forget, don't forget, two blokes, uh, both inside mids, both played less than 25, uh, 25 games up against Parker, JPK, Hanabry, a bit of Kieran Jack in there, and, and so on and so forth. And not only did they break even, but they won stoppage and centre clearance, and they, they were key in keeping... Uh, the Sydney midfield, which is their strength along with Buddy, um, uh, key in keeping those quiet. I, well, I'm going to give it, it I, I'm going to give it to Huey, I reckon. 11 well, tackles, that. 11 all, tackles, 6 clearances. Yeah. That, that's their huge numbers. There were about 3 or 4 that you could have made a, a good case for, and I've got, I've got no problem with him winning it because his impact in the middle was great. Yeah, everyone on the chat... Has gone today. I, I just feel like sometimes, you know, that they, they just, they're a bunch of sheep in chat, Maka. Don't you reckon? You know, oh, just... no, they could be guys. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm with them. <laughs> <laughs> we start talking about today, they go, oh, yeah, today, today, today. Then we start talking about Greenwood, and then they say, oh, Greenwood, Greenwood. <laughs> no, 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 look. But these, are, these guys that, that come on the chat, these are guys that know. They know football. I know, they're hardcore, and we're grateful that they're there every week. (laughs) Yeah, not not, not hardcore porn, hardcore porn. I'm only joking. We love you on the chat, guys. Uh, So, yeah, Huey Greenwood for the uh, Breakout Award this week, contrary to popular opinion. I'm not sure who we're going to give this next one to, Macca. Yeah, I don't know whether we necessarily had anyone that was terribly quiet. Um, I felt like everyone. I mean, I mean, maybe Mitch McGovern, not that he didn't get involved, but just because he happened to have a few shockers. Um, we've mentioned Bryce was a bit down, but, you know, forgiven. Um, yeah, well, we, you, you know, Riley Knight only had nine possessions, but again, I'm sure he was playing a role as well. So, um, yeah. Oh, and I uh, felt Riley Knight was a bit of a catalyst at times. Uh, a lot of his, uh, just his work rate, I think, ignites the team on occasion. So, I wouldn't, I wouldn't like to give it to Riley. Knott. Maybe give it to Buddy. I mean, Buddy was very quiet. Let's give it to him. <laughs> Missed a couple of key goals. Um, you know, I, I felt like uh, Talia uh, held on to him very well. Well, uh, other people were suggesting Chad Wingard in the chat. Um, I, like that. I like I like that because I, I hate Port. I don't hate Wingard. So uh, again, they're a very learned crew. Yeah, uh, we could give it to Matt Haas for pinging another hamstring. <laughs> well, uh, they all, I'm happy with all of them. Happy, well, maybe it's a joint award for all of those people. But I think what we are acknowledging is that there wasn't any real passengers on Friday no. night, and that's that's I, the most pleasing thing. Well, I think you're quite right, and I think so. We'll move outside our team, yeah. and uh, we'll give it to Buddy and, uh, uh, and Wingard. Wingard. Okay, no worries. Look, I think we're going to wrap it up there. Uh, we won't do the Cockwomble this week because that's Nikki's baby, and uh, I haven't really been taking too notice, too much notice of anyone. I noticed that uh, um, there's been a bit of argy bargy about the commentary again uh, this weekend. I, I I feel like there's a lot of 
lot to be left, lot left to be desired from the commentary on Channel Seven in particular this season. But uh, I don't think it's going to change any time soon. Yeah, well, that fat gut of Brian Taylor, you know, he really pisses me off because I don't think he's got any love for the Crows at all. And he, if he's ever got the opportunity to say something negative, he does. And uh, no, he gives me the shit, so I can't stand him. Yeah, I'm not a big fan. I'm not a big fan of uh, uh, most of them. Uh, I think the the lads that seem to be doing the best in the commentary are the ones that have been relegated back to the VFL. Um, Jason Bennett and uh, what's the other guy's name? Papalia or something or other. I can't remember the other guy's name. And just um, on our own, so you've you, you noticed. Um, we haven't had many arguments tonight, so it's obviously, Nikki, I hope you're listening, you are the factor. You cause all the arguments. Well, maybe she's the cockwomble. <laughs> all right, we'll give her the cockwomble. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, look, mate, thanks for joining me tonight. Thanks to the guys on the chat. Uh, you can catch us on Twitter and Facebook, aflcrowcast.com. Have a look at our website, aflcrowcast.com. And uh, we'll see you on Tuesday night uh, with Peter and Donkey probably for Tuesday Night Live. Thanks, Macca. No worries. Good night, all. Good night, chat people.